Welcome to this edition of Ask the Expert. This episode will be specific to tech tips for rebuilding genuine Dana axles, offering information about several key areas of the rebuild procedure. More information can be downloaded from the Dana website, The Expert. We would like you to take away from this demonstration the following four concepts. Determine if the axle uses a hard shim or crush sleeve for binion bearing preload. The proper procedure to set bearing preload with a crush sleeve. How to correctly measure backlash. How to measure and make adjustments based on gear pattern. Here are the tools you'll need. Check to see if your existing axle has a hard shim or a collapsible spacer, also called a crush sleeve. If this is your vehicle's original axle, or you have access to the BOM number on the part, you can check the parts list at the Dana website, The Expert. If you can't access that information, you'll need to look inside the pinion shaft to see which part you have. Remove the pinion nut, washer, flange, thrust washer, and tail bearing cone to make the spacer visible from the front of the axle. This is extremely important to make sure that you order the right rebuild kit for your vehicle. First, you'll need to select the right shim for the axle. We selected our shim using a pinion head height gauge. Consult the manual X5001CVSP on the expert to learn more about the shim selection process for the Dana Model 44. You might also use an existing shim, then adjust shim thickness based on the pattern reading you'll do later. Place the shim on the pinion and then press the bearing cone flush using a hydraulic press. For purposes of this video, we've altered the pinion so that it just slides on. Slide the collapsible spacer into place on the pinion stem. For purposes of this video, we've pre-pressed the pinion bearing cups into the carrier. Consult your manual for the correct pinion bearing cup installation procedure. Place the pinion into position with the spline extended through the seal opening. Place the tail bearing cone, then the thrust washer, over the spline. Do not add grease or oil to the bearing cone. That will mess up your torque to rotate value later. Press the pinion seal into the housing. Install the flange and the pinion nut. You'll use an end yoke installer to pull the flange tight to the pinion. Torque the pinion nut to a minimum reading of 200 foot-pounds. You should start to feel the crush collar collapsing. For this exercise, we have adjusted the spline to allow for easier removal and installation of the flange. Actual pinion nut torque can be 600 foot-pounds or a little higher in some cases. Now check your torque to rotate using a 50 inch-pound wrench. Slowly rotate the wrench and take a reading after the fourth revolution. This can be tricky. You can overcome the initial high reading due to moment of inertia by gently starting the flange rotation by hand. Record the torque to rotate value on your build sheet. You'll need it later when you're setting the differential bearing preload and measuring your total torque to rotate. We're using a carrier spreader to install the differential. Do not spread the carrier more than 15 thousandths of an inch to prevent permanent damage. Pry bars or dead blow hammers should be used with caution as they can damage the bearings. Consult with a manual for the correct shim selection method. You can also use shims that are already located on the flange and button sides of the differential and then make adjustments based on the pattern readings you get later. After you measure and record the shim thickness, apply a light film of grease to the carrier side of the shims and place them in the carrier differential bore. Tap the differential into place using a dead blow rubber mallet. Remove the spreader. Install the bearing caps. Remember that the bearing caps cannot be interchanged or rotated 180 degrees. In this build, the alignment marks are stamped differently on the bearing caps and carrier so you know which one goes where by matching the bearing cap with the carrier marking. We recommend marking the bearing caps with a paint pen so you can reinstall them on the correct side. Now, starting on the ring gear side, 
Tighten the bearing cap bolts to 70 to 90 foot-pounds. Measure the backlash at the heel of the ring gear tooth. The backlash should measure between 5 and 8 thousandths of an inch. Take the measurements on three teeth of the ring gear, about 120 degrees. To tighten the backlash, subtract thickness from the shim on the button side of the differential case and add equal thickness to the shim on the flange side. To loosen the backlash, add shim thickness to the button side and subtract equal shim thickness from the flange side. Recheck and repeat until the backlash is within spec. First, coat at least one-third of the ring gear with a heavy film of grease paint. Apply a light braking load to the outside of the ring gear. We've had a tool specially made, but you can also use a simple wood wedge to apply the load. Spin the input flange several times, both forward and reverse, until a clear pattern is present. You should get a pattern that looks like this. If your pattern is too high on the ring gear tooth, adjust the pinion shim thickness. If your pattern is too far to the heel or the toe on the ring gear tooth, adjust the vertical position of the ring gear by changing the backlash. Next, ensure the proper differential bearing preload by measuring the total torque to rotate. With the differential fully installed, measure the total system torque to rotate value. The procedure is the same as described previously for pinion torque to rotate. This number should be approximately 5 to 15 inch-pounds over the original torque to rotate measurement you took earlier. If you didn't get enough of an increase, add an equal amount of thickness to the differential shims on both the flange and button sides. Before you install the axle shafts, check the bearings for wear. Then pack the bearing with grease to prevent startup damage. Slide the shaft assembly into the tube bore. Engage the side gear spline. For this exercise, the brake backing plates aren't here, so we won't be taking it up to full torque. Remember, though, to align the plate studs with the brake flange bolts. Install the retainer nuts to 35 to 55 foot-pounds. For more information, visit us at our website, www.crateaxle.com.